الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن الشرح أو الكتاب منظومة البيقونية and we finished uh, line 20 where, where the author says وَثَانِي لَا يُسْقِطُهُ لَكِنْ يَصِفْ أَوْصَافَهُ بِمَا بِهِ لَا يَنْعَرِفُ And so today we're going to start from وَمَا يُخَالِفْ ثِقَةٌ فِيهِ الْمَلَى فَالشَّاذُ وَالْمَقْلُوبُ قِسْمًا تَلَى إِبْدَالُ رَاوٍ مَا بِرَاوٍ قِسْمُ وَقَلْبُ إِسْنَادٍ لِمَتْنِ قِسْمُ the author now goes into something that we kind of touched on, which is Ashad. Ashad. Ashad, it's an opposition. The word Shad is actually an opposition. It means a person is opposing. First of all, it is ma rawahu thiqa, a reliable person is narrating. <coughs> this person who's narrating is reliable. So he has integrity. He also has memorization. But he has opposed either a, peep, a person who's greater than him in memorization. Okay? So he's got memory. But he's opposing someone who has greater memorization than he does. Or he's opposing someone, who, or he's opposing a group of people that are more than him in number. So he's opposing a large quantity of people. So the definition is, مَا رَوَاهُ ثِقَةُ مُخَالِفًا it is مَا رَوَاهُ الثِّقَةُ مُخَالِفًا لِمَنْ هُوَ أَرْجَحُ مِنْهُ مَا رَوَاهُ الثِّقَةُ It is a person whose thiqa narrates مَا رَوَاهُ الثِّقَةُ uh, مُخَالِفَ But in opposition So he's opposing um, a people. So is Marawahu Thika Mukhalifan Liman Hua Ar Jahu Minhu Hivdan Aw Adadan Liman Hua Ar Jahu Minhu Hivdan Aw Adadan so the people are, are better than him in terms of either memorization, one, or either than two. His memory is not to their level, to that person's level, or they're more than him in number. So you find that some of the scholars, they weak a hadith based on their not being a narrator who's weak, the narrator is fine. But they say he's opposing other people. And the people he's opposing are either individually stronger than him or they are collectively stronger than him. That is called what? Ashad. Example for hadith which is shad is the hadith Ibn Majah narrated. There's a hadith Ibn Majah narrated in the Sahih where the Prophet sallallahu was said, he said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu Allah and his messi- Allah and his angels yusalluna ala mayamin as-sufuf they send salutation upon the mayamin as-sufuf meaning the right side of the line this hadith ibn Majah generated it if you look at all of the narrators of the chain they are all thiqat reliable men they've got memorization so from the apparent of the hadith it's authentic Lakin, there's an opposition 
of another wording that has come from this same hadith, which is, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu, Allah and his angels are sending salutation upon what? Alladheena yasiluna sufuf. Those who connect the line. So when you're in the salah, and in front of you there's a gap, some people don't go forward and, and, and connect that line. They just stay where they are. You miss this reward. You need to connect the line. Even if you realize that you're in the salah and there's a gap in front of you and the person on the right is not taking their position, you can move sideways to go to that line. Okay? Or even slightly left because of this hadith. Allah and his angels are sending on you what? Salutation. Bayhaqi narrated this in his sunan and then what did he say? He said, Wa huwa al-mahfuz. And he narrated the second one. He called this one mahfuz. Mahfuz, two hadiths are opposing one another. Okay, two hadiths. This one is the man whose memory is a bit lower. And this one, his memory is a bit higher. The one whose memory is a bit lower, what is it called? Shad. And this one is called what? The one whose memory is higher. It's called mahfuz. Okay? It's called what? Mahfuz. So if you see the scholars of hadith say, this hadith is mahfuz, it means the other one is shad. Okay? The other one is what? It's shad. Shad means opposition. Okay? It means, مَا رَاهُ الثِّقَةِ مُخَالِفًا لِمَنْ هُوَ أَرْجَحُ مِنْهُ حِفْظًا أو أكثر منه عددا. Also then the author goes into something known as al-maqloob. Okay, the author goes into what? The author goes into Al-Maqloob. What does he go into? Uh, Al-Maqloob. Al-Maqloob is, first of all, there's two types of Maqloob, so each one has to be defined separately. Okay, write this down. Maqloob is two types. The Maqloob, Maqloob. So we're now going to go into another type. That's why he says, uh, وَمَا يُخَالِفْ ثِقَّةٌ فِيهِ الْمَلَاءِ فَشَادُ فَشَادُ وَالْمَقْلُوبُ قِسْمَانِ انْتَلَاءِ الْمَقْلُوبُ 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 is two types two types these are terminologies that you should learn okay because when you read books of hadith and they say this hadith is maqloob this hadith is shad this hadith is mahfuf you're trying to train yourself to be able to read these terms. Like when you read a uh, medical book, you need to learn, know the jargons and the, the, the terms that they're using, correct? Same applies with ilm al-hadith. You can't read a book of hadith and not know mustalah al-hadith. The whole purpose of this science is to know those terms that they are using. Okay? Bukhari say this is maqloob. Ibn Hajar, when he's explaining Bukhari, these are the terms they're going to be using. These are the terms that they use amongst themselves. And in order to understand it, you'd have to know this. You'd have to know this. So the word al-maqloob is two types. Or the word al-maqloob is two types. The first one is ibdalu lafdin bi akhara. Ibdalu lafdin bi akhara. Ibdalu lafdin bi akhara. So the first, there's two types. Ibdal, Ibdal ulafdin, bi akhara. That's the first type. That's the first type of Ibdal. Uh, sorry, Makhloub. Okay. And that happens in two ways. This one happens in two ways. Min haythu arruwat. من حيث المت The chain So ibdalu lafdi bi akhara means a word will be exchanged with another word Maqloob by the way is it's the same root word that's used for our hearts and the heart is called the qalb li shiddati taqallub because it turns a lot The heart is called heart because it tosses and turns a lot. You want something today, you don't want it tomorrow, you do want it. 
قلب قلب it turns around it turns around us um, ولذلك that's what Allah said in the ayah يقلب جناحيه when he went to his jannah what did he do he's tossing his hands like this the word قلب means to turn things so here what's happening in the hadith is something we're back and front it happens in two ways إبدال اللفظ بآخرة one word takes the other place of the another word and that happens in two ways in terms of the ruwat the narrators the f- son and the father's name become back and front like for example my name is Abdul Rahman Hassan my, na- my father's name is Hassan my name is Abdul Rahman and so someone says Hassan Abdul Rahman that's min haythu ruwat the, the narrators the name of the father and the son back and front and ilm al-hadith in ilm al-hadith this can have a problem because then it makes the people say, who's this narrator? And get confused with this narrator. They do. Um, it could happen. Like for example, Ka'b ibn Murrah and Murrah ibn Ka'b, they're two different narrators. Ah, two different narrators. Ka'b ibn Murrah and Murrah ibn Ka'b are two different narrators. If you confuse them in the train, it's a problem. Well, there was a man by the name of Muhammad Zahid al-Kawthari. Has anyone here heard of him? Muhammad Zahid al-Kawthari? Ha. Muhammad Zahid al-Kawthari had a problem, big problem. And he was muta'assib Hanafi. He was a fanatic, fanatic towards the Hanafi madhab. Okay? Extremely fanatic. And he was from Turkey. He died many years ago. At least a hundred years ago now. What he did was, he used to do this tactic in hadith that he will authenticate the hadith by changing the name of the narrator the father and the son back and forth he will look for two people that live, who lived at the same time two people who lived at what? the same time and he will exchange their names with one another they lived at the same time they both are narrated from this person one his name is before the other the father and son names back and front and he would take the one that's reliable and that there's no question on him, put him in the chain and get rid of the one who? And Allah brought a great Imam, Abdul Rahman Yahya al Mu'allimi. He wrote a kitab called Al Tankilu Bima Fi Ta'nib al Kawthari, Bil al Abatid. And what he did is followed him up and he brought out all of his mistakes and where he went wrong. Okay? And how he played around. Are we all together? So if you don't know this science properly, this is what will happen to you. You think this is the chain, you look at the narrators, you go to the Qutb al-Rijal, you look at each of the narrators, and you say, Allahu Akbar, hadith sahih hadith sahih that's what you write on it. Little do you know that this hadith was, was put together for you. So that's the first type. Ibidalu lafdin bi akhara. And the first one is bin haythul ruwat. The second one is min haythul matni. The metal, the wording of the Prophet is back and front. Not that the Prophet said this. Abadan. Someone within the chain got a, a slip of the tongue. And so what's... And the most common one that happened in Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari, is the famous hadith, Sab'atu yudhilluhum allahu fi dhilli yawma la dhilla illa dhillu. Seven, Allah is going to give them a shade the day when there is no shade. And in the seven is what? وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِيَمِينِهِ It should be like that, right? A man who gives with his right hand. So much so, that his left hand doesn't know what the right hand gave. صح? Bukhari, it fell backwards. وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّقَ بِشِبَالِ A man who gave with his left hand. And he hid it so much, that his right hand doesn't know what his left hand gave. That hadith is what? It's maqloob. It was meant to be what? It was meant to be right hand. Are we all together? That's what it's meant to be. Some scholars, <coughs> like Ibn Qayyim, and other scholars, they use the concept of maqloob in the issue of um, which one should go down in the salah, your knees or your hands. Okay? When you go down. So the person is in ruku', they say, Sabi Allahu Ibn Hamidah, they get up from their ruku', Sabi Allahu Ibn Hamidah, should you go down with your knees like this first? Or should you go down with your hands first? Meaning go down like this. Which one is correct? There's a hadith of the Prophet where it said, لا يبرك أحدكم كما يبرك البعير. 
that one of you should not go down like the camel. And then the narration goes, فَلْيَضَعْ يَدَاهُ His hand, you should put your hands down first, قَبْلَ رُكْبَتَا Before your knees. Okay? This hadith, Ibn Al-Qayyim and Izzad Al-Bi'ad, he said it's maqloob. It's back and front. It should have been what? فَلْيَضَعْ رُكْبَتَا قَبْلَ الْيَدَا Put your knees down before your legs. Uh, before your hands. Put your knees down before your what? Ibn Al-Qayyim is of the opinion that the knees go down before the what? The hands. But that which seems strongest, Wallahu alam, and Allah has more knowledge, uh, is that it should be the hands that go down before the feet, the knees. That the hands should go what? Uh, but just, and there's an, uh, a longer discussion in this regard that we can't go into right now. But um, it's what the scholars add to the issue of maqloob, back and front. Okay. Now we finish the first type. The second type of maqloob here is ibdal isnadin matnin bi isnadi matnin akhara. Ibdal. Hands is more stronger. Now, that, that seems stronger. That the person goes down with there. But again, it's a difference of opinion. It's a difference of? Difference of opinion. The knee, knees and the hands, it seems more stronger that the hands should go down first. But there was a lot of differences of opinion at this era that we lived in. Sheikh, Ab, Sheikh Abd Aziz ibn Ubaz believed that it's best that your knees go down first. And Sheikh Al-Albani was of the opinion that your hands go down first. And if you look at their opinions and you try to really study what the arguments and the difference is and where it's... It seems strong. Well, ilmu in Allah that the haq and the truth is more towards Sheikh Albani's side. Huh? Does the camel go down first on his hands or does he go first down on his knees? That which seems apparent is that he goes down on his knees first. Who's ever been, who's ever seen a camel go down? Put your hand up if you've seen a camel go down. Ah. I made a video on it one time. Yeah. If you look at the the camels, so this is let's say this is the camel. I'm not gonna draw the head, okay? This is the tail by the way, okay? This is the legs of the camel. Okay. I wanna show you guys the way it goes. Um the camel, which part does it go down first with? The front or the back? It goes first front, right, and then it goes back. If you look at the way that the front part of his legs go, it folds this way. True or false? Which part of your body folds like that? Your knees do. Look at your knees when you go down. Your knees fold this way. If you look at the camel, he has knees on his two front. These are where his knees are. True, sir? And how does these one how do these one go? The last two. They go the opposite direction. Which part of your body goes the opposite direction? Inwards. Your hands, look at it, it goes this way. It goes inwards. And this one goes inwards. Huh? So the camel actually goes down, first down like that, and then it goes down like that. Sahih? I'm not a good artist. Yeah? <laughs> it looks like a buffalo, yeah. Okay. But do you, do you understand the concept? Huh? That this is his knees, and this is what, he, what you can call his legs, his hands. Pay attention now. Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen is ajeeb, wallahi, wallahi, when you look at Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen, he is an amazing alim, haqqan, wallahi. He goes, no. The whole discussion of being made, what, did, what went down first, is not the discussion. Hey, what's the discussion there, Sheikh? He said the discussion is what part of his body goes for, forward. Which part of his body goes down first? Is it the upper part or the lower part? 
Do you get it? No? Shem Rabbi Taimi goes, the upper part goes down first. And when you guys go down on your hands first, your upper part goes down first. And your lower part goes down later. And the camel does that, sah? Are we all together? But what we response to Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin ma'ajalalati wa ilmihi wa fadlihi with his honor and virtue and his status and his understanding is the hadith specific says فَلَا يَبْرُكْ Buruk means don't go down on your knees. Don't go down on your what? Your knees, your knees. Like the camel goes down on his knees. So the question isn't no, what goes down, what part of his body goes down first. It's what he goes down with first. So is this the need or not? So from Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi's statement, you see that he doesn't disagree with that. He's taken another argument on, and brought that forward. Anyways, as you can see, it's something that is a valid, very valid difference of opinion that we shouldn't make a big issue out of. But we, it, it is one of those things that there is still a, there's a still correct opinion, by the way. Not all of those views are correct. There's only one right. And each person will say, this is the right one. So, any issue in the religion, there's only one. Hatta, even if it's a valid difference of opinion, there's only what? One truth. One way. This. But the difference is, when it's no valid difference of opinion, then everyone has to follow this one. And you're not excused for paving another path. But, if there is a valid difference of opinion, you're excused because this has now become unclear to you, 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 you. So, that's all it is. And you're excused for your ijtihad, inshallah ta'ala. But you have to strive and ask Allah to guide you to that path. So. The second type, by the way, is ibdalu isnadi matnin bi isnadi matnin akhara. Changing a, send a chain with the wording of the hadith with another chain and the wording of the hadith. And that's the one we spoke about, which happened to who? Al-Imam al-Bukhari, the people of Baghdad, they did it to Al-Imam al-Bukhari. Remember when they tested him? They sat him down. They all took, it was about 10 of them, I think. And they each had 10 hadiths, which made up how much? 100, right? 10 times 10 is what? Yeah, so that's what they did to him. They all took 10 hadiths and they exchanged it amongst themselves. This was maqloob. One man has a chain, he borrows the wording of the Prophet and they swapped it like that. This is maqloob by changing the chain of the hadith and the wording and the chain of the hadith and the wording here. This one is only done to test a person's memorization, to see if they actually know uh, and etc. Exam papers. Exam? Exam papers. <clears throat> and he passed the test. Who passed the test? Al Imam al Bukhari. He passed it. He answered it all. The author then goes into Wal Fardu ma kayyatahu bi thiqatin aw jam'in aw qasrin ala riwayatin. Now we're going to go into Al Fard. We're going to go into. Uh, fard. Fard is when a reliable person is alone in something. The word fard is al fard. It is um, it's when somebody reliable is alone in something. And it's two types. It's what? It's two types. There's two types of fard in a hadith. By the way, it's fard biddal, dal at the ending. It's two types. The first one is called fard mutlaq, unrestricted fard. And this is when there's no one else who narrated this except this individual. He's the only person who narrated it. No one else. All of the narrations, they go back to one person. The second type is Fard Muqayyad. It's a restricted Fard. Which is, is restricted to a particular land. 
No one else has narrated this hadith except the people of Medina, for instance. Or no one else has narrated this hadith except the people of Kufa. Or the people of this country. It's restricted to them. Those are the two types. It's called Fard Mutlaq, which is a particular narrator. So the first one is Fard Mutlaq. And second is Al-Fard Al-Muqayyid. Those are two types. The first one is Fard uh, al It's when Ma tafarrad bihi thiqa. A reliable person is alone on it. And the second one is Fard muqayyid Is Ida tafarrad bihi ahlu baladi mu'ayyanin bi'an lam yarwihi illa ahlu baladi kada wa kada. Is when a particular land they narrate that hadith. And sometimes you find in the chain there's no one, ex- there's no one else except the people of Medina. And this hadith only narrates from the people of Medina. This is fard. It's called fard. Now the author goes into an issue called mu'allal. He says, وَمَا بِعِلَّةٍ غُمُوضٍ أَوْ خَفَى عِنْ مُعَلَّلٌ عِنْدَهُ مُوْقَدْ عُرِفَى We're now going to go into, I can personally say this is the hardest, hardest subject of this whole science. You might know the science of hadith. You might be knowledgeable in the science of hadith. But this is not for everyone. This one. The issue of illah. Hidden defect in a hadith. Not everyone can talk about this one. Not every scholar talk spoke about this. And Imam Shafi'i never spoke about this. Imagine that. Ma ilmihi bil hadith. Shafi'i knew hadith. He's knowledgeable in a hadith. This was not for everyone. This is the type that are only jahabidatul nuqad a selected individuals have come to understand it. Huh? The likes of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Ali ibn al-Madini, Imam al-Bukhari, Imam al-Muslim, Abu Hatim al-Razi, Abu Zur'at al-Razi, Imam al-Dara al-Qutni, and others. These were the people. Uh, they had deep knowledge of hadith. To the extent that they can see hidden defects in the hadith. Huh? They can and it became for them, hadith became like a man who is a Sayrafi. A Sayrafi is a man who works at money transfer, money exchange. What's his job? To see whether the money is forged, or if it's real money, or if it's not. صح? Before these machine, machines came and was able to identify the money for you, these people, they could really see the money that's real and the money that's not. صح? They touch it. They lift the coin. Is that the coin? No, that's not true. If you asked him to explain to me, how do you know this was not real? It's something he's become, in, it became innate for him because he's been doing it for so long, so long. He's learnt it now. These pop scholars of hadith, they've lived with the statements of the Prophet for so long. They've learnt how he talks, alayhi salatu salam. And his speech, the way it's broken down, the way he spoke, the way he speaks, the way he, the Prophet ﷺ, they learned it for years. So, it's impossible, or more like it's imp- very unlikely for them not to, for them not to see that issue. Well, one of, one of the things that really amazed me is, there's a kitab called Ila Lil Warida, written by Daru Qutri, it's over 10 volumes. <laughs> They said, Amlahu min hifdhi. He dictated it from his memory. Of this science. Al Ilal. The book is only on Ilal. It's called Al Ilalul Warida. Amlahu, brothers. He dictated Dar Qutri. He dictated it from memory. The Habi said, if this is true, that Dar Qutri dictated this from memory, he is no less. Then Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Bukhari and others. He's like them on the level of hadith. Dar al was after them. So this science is one of the hardest sciences in hadith. It's called ilal, defect of hadith. Knowing it, it's not for everyone. It's not what? It's not for every single body.
So this is called what? Al-ilalu. The author says, وَبَابِ عِلَّةِ الْغُمُوضِ الْأَوْخَفَى مُعَلَّلٌ عِنْدَهُمُ قَدْ عُرِفَى The hadith is hidden. Remember, defects is every type of weakness in a hadith. If a hadith is not connected, it's a defect. If there's an opposition, it's a defect. But this defect is not the normal defect. It's a hidden defect. It's a defect that you won't be able to identify. And one of the people who was very good at ilal at this era, very well grounded in ilal at this era, was Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i. Sheikh Muqbil was very grounded in ilal. Sheikh Muqbil, rahimahullah, he was very good. Rahimahullah. He has a kitab called Ahadith al-Mu'allah Zahiru al-Siha. Amazing kitab. Haqiqatan. You realize his understanding. Hadith al-Mu'allah. Hadith which have illa in it. Zahiru al-Siha. But when you look at it from the apparent, it looks connected to you. It looks authentic. No problem. When you look at it, but there's a hidden defect and he'll bring the hidden defect for you. He will what? He will bring the hidden uh, defect. Example, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to give you is Ya'lam ibn Ubaid. By the way, the issue of illah is when a person is an alim. There's like Sufyan al Thawri and an Imam al Bukhari and Ahmad ibn Hanbal. These are great Imams. When they do a mistake and you identify their mistake, that's very hard for anyone to see that because asal is that they don't do mistakes really a lot. In hadith, they're very detailed, they're precise. It's identifying a strong individual in hadith, grounded in hadith, bringing out his mistakes. Bringing out what? His mistake. I'll give you an example. Sufyan al Thawri is an Imam. Qawiyun Hifd. He's strong in memorization. Sufyan al Thawri, the hadith of Ya'la ibn Ubaidin, who narrated from Sufyan al Thawri. Sufyan al Thawri said, An Amr ibn Dinarin. An who? An Amr ibn Dinarin. An ibn Umarin marfu'an al bayyari bil khiyari. Al bayyari bil khiyari ma lam yatafarraqa. That the buying and the selling is based on choice. You, buy a, you sell a product to me, I'm on the other side, I can take it, and I have something known as. Uh, I can choose to say, you know what, I don't want the product, just give me back my money. Buying and selling is based on choice. As long as they don't leave each other. So there's a time and a period of time whilst you're in front of each other where you can bring back the product. This hadith, Sufyan al attributed it to who? That he took it from? Amr ibn Dinarin. But it's actually a mistake. It's not Amr ibn Dinarin, it's Abdullah ibn Dinarin. This hadith is illah. But it's authentic, inshaAllah ta'ala. How is it authentic? Amr al-Dinarin and Abdullah ibn al-Dinarin, they're both what? InshaAllah ta'ala, reliable. They're both authentic. But things like that, identifying the mistake of one who rarely does mistakes. Ah, it's hard. Then the author says, وَذُقْتِلَا فِي سَنَدٍ أَوْ مَتْنٍ مُضْطَرِبٌ عِنْدَ أُوْهَيْلِ الْفَنِّ Mudarib means what? We're now going to go into another type which is called Al-Mudarib. 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 If you look at the kitab, وَذُقْتِلَا فِي سَنَدٍ أَوْ مَتْنٍ مُضَّرِبٌ Mudarib means contradicting. It's, there's two hadiths that seem to be contradicting one another. Mutasawiyatil quwa. Both of them are strong as each other. If one is stronger than the other, then there's not a problem. We go to the concept of shad. Mushkila. Shad al mahfuz. But here they're both strong as each other. Ah, they are. La yunkiru tarjih. We're unable to say this one is stronger than this one. We're unable to say that. So someone must have done a mistake. Or narrators must have done a mistake. Majority of the times, the idhirab happens in the chain. And it can sometimes happen in the wording, the metan, of how the tra- hadith was transmitted. That's called what? Muddarib. That's called Muddarib. Two hadiths that s- are supposedly made to seem to be contradicting one another. Okay? They seem to be. They... An example of this is that the Prophet 
By the way, some scholars actually took time out, take those narrations, and they brought it together. They reconciled between how to bring these narrations together and that they're not contradicting one another. <laughs> An example of the hadith is that which the Imam Tirmidhi narrated on the authority of Fatima bin Tiqaisin. She was asked about zakat and then she said, Inna fil mali lahaqqan. There are rights on it, siwa zakati. There are rights on the wealth other than zakat. Okay? That Tirmidhi narrated that version. Ibn Majah narrated another word, wording which says, Laysa fil mali. There is no, there's no right in the wealth other than zakat. They, be, they, they seem to be contradicting one another, right? One is saying that there are rights that you need to give from your wealth other than zakat. The second hadith is saying, there is no rights on your wealth, only zakat. And there's no way to reconcile between the two. This is what? Idrabun contradiction. And Iraqi said, فَهَذَا إِدْرَابُ لَا يَحْتَمِلُ التَّأْوِيلِ This is an idrab that can't take any interpretation. This is a problem from one of the narrators. One of the narrators said this. He did a mistake. <coughs> and this is very little, by the way. These hadith are very little. Another thing that the author talks about is, the author says, وَالْمُدْرَجَاتُ فِي الْحَدِيثِ مَا أَتَتْ مِنْ بَعْضِ أَلْفَاضِ الرُّوَاتِ اتَّصَلَتْ we're now going to go into Mudraj. Al-Mudraj. Al-Mudraj. Ah. Ha. Ha, Kyle. Next week, yes. Hadith abrogate one another. <coughs> there could be abrogation, sahih. Um, but the, here the question is the both the hadiths are the same hadith, it's not two different hadiths that are contradicting each other. They just came in two different wordings. Okay, Ibn Tirmidhi is one and Ibn Majah was one. I just mean mean watching akhar from just another wording. This the same hadith from the same narrator. From the same, someone's done a mistake here. One of the narrators has mis narrated, incorrectly transmitted it. We're now going to go into Mudraj. Mudraj is when the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the statement of someone goes inside it. وَالْمُدْرَجَاتُ فِي الْحَدِيثِ مَا أَتَتْ مِنْ بَعْضِ أَلْفَاضِ الرُّوَاتِ اتَّصَلَتْ In the middle of the hadith of the Prophet someone's wording went in. Ah, that happens. And an example of this is the hadith of the Prophet where he said, لِلْعَبْدِ الْمَمْلُوكِ أَجْرَانِ The slave who is owned, he has two rewards. Abu Huraira was the one narrating the hadith, and people are writing. Abu Huraira stopped the hadith of the Prophet and then he spoke from himself. The students, what did they think? All of this is the Prophet said it. And so they wrote it. وَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٌ بِيَدِي لَوْ لِلْجَهَدُ فِي السَّبِيلَ وَالْحَجُّ وَبِرُّ الْأُمِّي لَحَبَبْتُ أَنَا أَمُوتَ وَأَنَا مَمْلُوكٌ This is all from Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira said, I swear by the Lord in which my soul is in his hand. If it wasn't for jihad fi sabilillah, and if it wasn't for hajj, and if it wasn't for the concept of being obedient towards your parents, لَأَحَبَبْتُ I would have loved أَنَا أَمُوتَ وَأَنَا مَمْلُوكٌ I would have loved to die as a slave owned. Because of this hadith, the reward that the Prophet mentioned for them. Now we know that the Prophet would never say that, Ali huh? That I want to be a slave. The Prophet wouldn't say that, Ali sallallahu Abu Huraira. Abu Huraira was expressing himself, but the students they what? A student writ it. How do we know that this is mudraj? Another student realized that Abu Huraira stopped. Another student is fatin, sharp. He looks and he goes, mm. Abu Huraira stopped. He's talking from himself. Whereas another one didn't. I thought it, all this is from the Prophet ﷺ. So by, by bringing all the chain of narrations, you know where it all goes to. This is Mudraj. What's it called? Mudraj. Or even sometimes the 
narrator might be narrating a hadith and he feels the need to explain a word. One of the words in the hadith. And some of the narrators, they think that the Prophet said this. Uh, they think the Prophet said this, alayhi salatu salam. And so books have been written about it. Um, one of the most comprehensive books that have been written about it is the kitab written by Khatib al-Baghdadiyu is called Al-Fasl al-Wasri Liba Udrija min al-Nakli. Also Suyuti has a kitab on it and also Ibn Siddiq has a kitab called Tasil. You can buy all those books. All of them like they took from Khatib al-Baghdadi. Suyuti and Ibn Siddiq, they all took from who? Uh, Khatib al-Baghdadi's one. The author then says, وَمَا رَوَا كُلُّ قَرِيرٍ عَنَاقِي مُدَبَّجٌ فَعْرِفُ حَقًّا وَانْتَقِيهِ We're now going to go into um, المدبج المدبج What is المدبج المدبج Before you know you, before you know what a مدبج is you have to know what is أقران it's necessary to know Akran. Akran are contemporaries. Two people who are contemporaries to each other. It is two people who are either the same age or they took from the same shuyukh. They took from the what? Same shuyukh. They're called Akran. Akran. If these two. So, what is Akran? Akran is what? Aqran is two people who are the same age. One. Same age. Or they all took from the same shuyukhs. Their shuyukhs are the same. One, there might be 10 years difference between the two of them, but this one started seeking knowledge old and this one started seeking knowledge early. So they're still Aqran because they took from the same shuyukh. Okay? Good. If they narrate from each other, what is it called? It's called Muddabaj. If the two contemporaries narrate from one another, you know, I need a hadith from you. Give, this me, give me this hadith. Okay, you give me this hadith. This is called a what? It's called Muddabaj. Like Aisha radiallahu anha narrating from Abu Hurairah and Abu Hurairah narrating from Aisha radiallahu anha. They're Muddabaj. They're both from the Prophet. They're both companions. Also, um, Zuhri narrated from Umar ibn Abdul Aziz or Umar ibn Abdul Aziz narrated from Zuhri because they're tabi'in. They're both what? They're tabi'in. Or Al-Imam Malik narrated from Awza'i or Awza'i narrated from Al-Imam Malik with the, because they're both tabi'u tabi'in. <coughs> this is all mudabbaj. This is all what? <coughs> it's called mudabbaj. متفق لفظا وخطا متفق وضده في ما ذكرنا المفترق. Like Sheikh now goes into المفت المتفق والمفترق. We're gonna now go into المتفق والمفترق. What does المتفق والمفترق mean? المتفق والمف المتفق والمفترق It is So the first one is المتفق متفق means two things are the same المفترق means two things are different What does that mean? Means المتفق Their names are the same والمفترق means They are two different people like him Okay المتفق أن تتفق أسماء الرواتي These two people have the same name his name, his father's name, and his granddad's name, three names are the same. Well, Muftariqu means these two same people have the same name, they're two different people. So, same in name, different in, 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 in reality, they're two different people. Okay? This one people confuse a lot. It's called Al Muttafiqu, they're the same, these two people, Al well, Muftariqu, but they're two different people. So many scholars have written books on this. From the famous of them is Khatib al-Baghdadi's kitab that he's written, rahimahullah ta'ala. Khatib al-Baghdadi has written a book uh, on it. 
Like for example, the name Al-Khalil ibn Ahmed. There are six people who share this name. Six people. Al-Khalil ibn Ahmed. Six people. The most famous of them is Shaykh Sibawihi, right? The most famous one of them, Al-Khalil ibn Ahmed, is Shaykh Sibawihi. Sibawihi's teacher, Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. He's the most famous one. Hence why we don't just say Khalil ibn Ahmed. We always have to say Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. To make it clear that it's him we're talking about. Huh? Because there are six other people that have that name. Ahmed ibn Ja'far ibn Hamdan. Four people have that name. Four people have that name. All of which lived at the same time. All of whom lived at the same era, same time. So it's important that you know these people, the differences between the two. Or the difference between these four. Who are, which one's which? Who has which one, each one narrated from? Which, when was he born? When did he die? When was he born? When, this is all the science of hadith. The author now goes into another t- topic, which is He says, Now we're going to go into المؤتلف والمختلف. المؤتلف والمختلف. Well, Wal Mukhtalifu. Which one? Yeah, I did. I said the, the names are the same, but they're two different people. Ha. Khalil ibn Ahmed al Farai. Khalil ibn Ahmed. They're the same. Mutafiq means ittifaq. They agreed on name. Muftariqu means they differed on who they each are. Now we're going to go into another, top, another chapter, which is called Al Mu'talifu Wal Mukhtalifu. Al-Mu'talifu wal-Mukhtalifu Al-Mu'talifu wal-Mukhtalifu is Their names are the same Or their nickname is the same Okay Their name is the same Their laqab is the same Their kunya is the same Abu this they're the same Or their lineage is the same All of this which is like in Khattan in terms of writing Writing wise it's the same but it's different when you, when you pronounce it. When you write it, it's the same. For example, one of them is called, look at this. That's one. Hey, are they the same? Are they the same? This one and this one. Writing wise, it's the same, right? You guys can't see anything. No, this one's called Salam, and this one's called Salam. Two different ways. See how different I pronounce it? Salam. That's one, one narrator. His name is called Salam. And the other one is called what? Salam. Are you there, brothers? This is an example uh, for it. Another example that scholars give is this one. Okay. Hey, what do you think? Does that look the same when you write it? This one is Abbas. And this is Ayash. The difference is what? Dots. By the way, before at the time of the Salaf, they never used to write the dots. The dots were never written. So in terms of writing, it's the same. <laughs> What's the difference? The dots. Just like some people complain about, no, oh, there's no harakat on this. I can't read this, there's no harakat on this. I can't read Arabic if it doesn't have haraka on it. These people didn't have dots before. So they, they used to read it without dots. Sah? Like an example, a thawriyu and a tawziyu. It's dots. They, they knew the difference like him. Ala kulli hal, this was called al mu'talifu wal mukhtalifu. Okay? Al mu'talifu. Meaning that Mu'talif means the names are the same. Like in al but the names are different again. They're the same in writing, but they're different in pronunciation. Ha. And tatafiq al khattu wa takhtalifu al lafbu. The writing is the same, the pronunciation is different. You pronounce them both differently. 
that's another chapter, okay? And it really happens because of the nukta or the shakal, the haraka or the dots, okay? This chapter, Al-Mu'talif wa al Again, there's a kitab written by Khatib al-Baghdadi, he talks about it. Khatib al-Baghdadi wrote a book on it as well. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. Then the author says, وَالْمُنْكَرُ الْفَرْدُ بِرَاوِنْ غَدَى تَدِيلُهُ لَا يَحْمِرُ التَّفَرُّدَى What did we speak about before when we spoke about Shad? What did we say Shad was? We said Shad is a reliable person opposing someone who is greater than him in memorization or a group of people who are more than him in number. Munkar is, um, which is the strongest opinion, is that the Munkar is when a weak person opposes people who are strong. His individual is weak. His memorization is already weak and it's bad and it's terrible. And then he goes out and he then opposes other people. Okay? This hadith is now called what? Munkar. Like in the author here, he's of the opinion when he defined Munkar, that is the hadith, um, a narrator is alone in it, but this person is manfahu shagalatu, his mistakes are excessively, or he's excessively heedless, or he's a fasiq, but he's not a liar. Okay? But he's, there's not, there's not, an, it's not necessarily opposition there. The author here, he's saying that this person who's narrating this hadith in the chain, there's a man who has, he does mistakes excessively, or he's excessively heedless. Or his fisk is clear, he's a fasiq. Of course, that fisk hasn't reached the level of what? Kadib, not lying. Because if he lies, then he goes to another t- topic called al mawdu which the author's going to mention soon. This hadith, and there doesn't have to necessarily be a opposition, according to the author. But we say it's with all of that an opposition. Uh, inshallah ta'ala Because that's, the, that's the, what the majority of the scholars refer to as The overwhelming majority of the mutaakhirin Ma rawahu al-da'if wa mukhalifa li-thiqati Ibn Salah, Fathu al-Mughith and Tawdihu al-Afkar Go to those books and you see it there inshallah ta'ala When he died to Suyuti he says in his Alfiyah He says Al-Munkaru al-Ladhi rawa ghayru al-thiqa Mukhalifan fi nukbatin qad haqqaqa That's what it is inshallah ta'ala It is a weak individual Okay Whose weakness hasn't reached lying. It is, he's not lying. But he's out there opposing people who are reliable, who are, who are strong, who are tough in their memorization. He goes and he opposes them. Inshallah, I'm going to finish the book today, inshallah. Matrukuhu ma wahidun bihin farad wa ajma'u li da'fihi fawakarad. Now we go to a chapter called Al Matruk. Matruk is a person whose hadith is rejected. Matruk. It's a person whose hadith is rejected because he lies in his normal conversation. He's never been seen lying about the Prophet ﷺ, but he lies in his day-to-day conversation. Okay? Or he is, 99% of the time, he's heedless. He doesn't know what he's saying, like in hadith. Strafil, heedless. Okay? This is what? This is matruk. Like an overwhelming majority of scholars, when they refer to it as matruk, is the one is muttahamun bil kadhi fil hadith. Is the one that when he lies in his normal conversation. If he lies about the Prophet, his hadith is called mawdu'ah. But this person, there are some people who lie in their normal conversations, but when they come to the Prophet, like, stop it, stop it. They do this, they say, huh? they say that. I can't lie about the Prophet. No. In the science of hadith, your hadith is rejected. Your hadith is what? Rejected. Your matruq al hadith. Because you lie in your day to day conversation. This hadith is called matruq. Wal kadibul muhtalakul masnu'u ala nabi fadalik al mawdu'u. The author now goes about the one who lies about the Prophet. This is called al mawdu'u. Last, last one, inshallah ta'ala. Al mawdu'u. Mawdu' is the one who lies about the Prophet Ali Salatu He makes a hadith of the Prophet Ali Does he have to do it deliberately? Ha. Some scholars they say whether he does it even by accident. This hadith is called Mawdu'. 
It's mawdu'ah. Even if he does it. And this is fabricated, yes, 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 fabricated. Mawdu' means fabricated. What is the reason that people would actually do this for? A lot of the times it's because of a ta'asub in madhab. People who are fanatic towards the madhab. Like for example, some people made a hadith up and they said that the Prophet said, said, Siraj ummati Abi Harifa. Abi Harifa is the lamp and the lantern of my ummah. Siraj ummati Abu Hanifa, sorry. The, the lamp of my ummah is Abu Hanifa. They made this up. Another example is the statement of those who go overboard with Ali ibn Talib. They said, Al, they said Ali yun khayru al-bashar. Faman shakka fi dhalika faqad kafar. Ali is the best of creation. And anyone who doubts it, he's a disbeliever. Uh, and etc. So people do make it up. They say that. They authenticate hadiths. For an imam of the madhab to big him up and say, look, the Prophet spoke about him, alayhi salatu salam, and etc. And other people, they do it out of lead. They make the hadith up for the leader. As they, they want some money. So they make the hadith up for the leader. Wama ila dhalik. I'm just going to give you, inshallah ta'ala, five principles that you can identify that a hadith is, is fabricated. And we're going to conclude with that, inshallah. Um, <coughs> the first way to identify the hadith is fabricated is This speech does not resemble the speech of prophets Prophets have a way of way in which they speak The first way This hadith that you're looking at It doesn't resemble the speech of the prophets It's some weird way of speaking like right? prophets don't say this and some some of you guys might say how do i know a speech of like for example if you read a, a email someone sent it to you you can tell from the email if this email is written by a learned person or if a, a very young individual uneducated wrote it so you can see the difference true or false there's a particular way that learned people speak that's the same way. Prophets, they have a way in which they speak. You can only learn that by studying the prophets and their words and the way they speak. The second one is, The speech is more towards and more leaning towards the description of um, a doctor or something like that, prescribing something. Like, if you look at the Sufiya, the way that they bring up, make up hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this doesn't look like a, 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 a Prophet for sure, it looks more towards a doctor or something like that, I prescribe this or something like that. يَكُونَ الْحَدِيثُ بَاطِلًا فِي نَفْسِ فَيَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ بُطَانَ وَلَيْسَ مِنْ كَلَامِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. The hadith is batil in and within itself. It goes against things that we know out of our religion by necessity. Number four is مُخَالِفَةُ الْحَدِيثِ لِصَلِيحِ الْقُرْآنِ this hadith is going against click ayat of the Quran, for instance. The first one is going against, it goes against the Prophet's speech. Sometimes what you see is that the person who's making this hadith, I don't know, they contradict themselves in the same hadith. The beginning and the front is contradicting one another. That's the fourth. The third. The fourth one, it goes against clear cut Quranic discourse. And number five is way that the hadith is written it, it falls short on the arabic grammar excessively like it's weak when it comes to the level of the arabic if you go to the kitab al manar al munif fi sahih wa daif ibn al qayyim mentioned 15 15 ibn al qayyim mentioned 15 ways to know 15 go there the author concluded the book by saying waqad atat kal jawhari al maknuni سميتها منظومة البيقوني فوق الثلاثين بأربع أتت أقسامها تمت بخير خوتمت and he goes وقد أتتك الجوهر المكنون my book has come as a جوهر a jewel a reserved jewel سميتها I called it منظومة البيقوني I called it منظومة البيقوني فوق الثلاثين بأربع أتت its lines are thirty four lines and I've divided it in that way and I concluded it with good 
Alhamdulillah, Allah allowed us to finish this small little uh, treaty, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the first one is that the speech, it doesn't resemble the speech of the prophets. I'll conclude there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayk.